Hi, I'm Rick from Marathon Models. In this video, I'm going to cover the setting up and calibration of the Radio and Phantom 2 Vision Plus. I'll also cover changing the Vision Plus from the standard Phantom mode where all the GPS functions etc are all locked down and change it into the NASA mode and I'll cover some of the basic adjustments and calibrations that you can make. Now two things to do before you connect your Phantom Vision Plus to the Assistant software and turn it on. The first thing you need to remember to do, although you're not going to fly it, you do need to remove the transit lock and also the lens cap because this would put the gimbal out of balance when you turn it on. The other thing, as always, as I've covered this many times, is always, always remove your props. Two seconds and it's done. Now to connect the Phantom Vision Plus to your computer, just simply take the supplied USB lead, open up the port, ensure you get it in the right way around, plug it in, and then always remember, turn the model on, one push, two pushes. To connect your Phantom transmitter, to the NASA assistant. There's a small USB lead socket on the bottom of the transmitter and again take your supplied USB socket, make sure it's the right way around and then plug it in and always remember to switch it on to connect to the computer. Now the first thing we need to calibrate is the transmitter itself. So the first thing to do is you need to open up the RC assistant. So this is not the phantom assistant, this is the actual RC assistant. So the first thing is you shoot that up, then plug your transmitter into your computer and turn on the controller. Now when you turn on the controller you will now see when you twiddle the sticks you'll see all the various cursors moving backwards and forwards. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to calibrate the transmitter itself. So what you need to do is you need to cal click on the actual calibration button. So you click it on once, it just tells you what you're going to be doing, and then you click it on again, and then move the transmitter sticks in a rotating motion all the way around. And you, this, what this does is it tells the transmitter all the full throws and directions. Once you've done that, if you just click on finish, and that's a calibration complete. Now you have one other little choice here as well is up here you've got compliance modes. Now what this is is this is depending on what country you're in this is the output of the transmitter's power. So you have CE mode which is for European countries uh, this is this limits it to 25 milliwatt output and you also have the FCC mode. So this mode on the Phantom Vision Plus this will give you uh, it's 400 meters of range. On FCC mode, you'll have 800 meters of range. So depending on what country you're in, you can click on this one. So this would cover things like America, etc. They can run on FCC mode. Now you can also check at this point if your transmitter needs a firmware upgrade. So if you click on that, the info button, it will actually tell you here, this is the current firmware your transmitter is running on, and this is the firmware that you can upgrade to. So as you can see they match so there's no requirement for any uh, updating. Now the next step we need to do is actually update the firmware on the Phantom Vision Plus itself. So the first thing you need to do is if you haven't already done so download the latest version of the Phantom 2 Assistant software. You'll find this on the download page on the actual Phantom Plus uh, DJI's website with the Phantom Plus. So if you just open up the software And remember to, turn, to plug the Phantom, Phantom in and then turn it on. Now, if there is an update required, which is the case, um, you have a couple of choices. Uh, basically, what it will do is it will tell you what your current version that you're running on just now. So in the case of this video, uh, the current version at the time was 3, and there is now a 3.2. So it's already up, opened the window so you're basically ready to update so if you just click on the upgrade button it's just telling you do you really want to yes now the model will start bleeping now and flashing all red lights so it's during the update 
Now that it's done, what you need to do to complete that, you need to turn your model off. And then back on again to complete it. Okay, and then we just close that window down. Now this is the main update page, so this will actually tell you all the different uh, various uh, firmwares that you're running on and what uh, the latest version is. So in this particular case, uh, these all seem to be matching up. That's matching, that matches, that matches. So in the case of this actually, there are no further updates to do. Now the next thing we're going to do, now that we've calibrated the transmitter itself, what we need to do, if we go over to the basic calibration, basic tab and RC, you'll see again, you've got all the calibrations there. So although we've calibrated the transmitter, we need to now calibrate the transmitter to the model. So once again, click on start and then rotate your sticks in a roundabout position back to the middle and then press finish, click on OK. And that's basically the transmitter now all calibrated. Okay, I'm now just going to cover some of the other tabs and just what they do before we move over into changing it to the NASA mode. So the first one, if we just change over to basic, now we've done the RC, now the gains, these are basically ways that you can actually ch change where, where the, the way that the model flies. So your basic gains is how well it holds its position when it's in GPS mode, and that's all your various pitch, roll, yaw, and vertical. Attitude gains, that's the, the how well it will work in when you're actually putting input functions into how well it will react to them. If you don't know what they do, I do recommend just leaving these alone. Okay, the next part, if you click over onto Advance, we have two tabs. Now, the first one is Battery. Now, this will tell you basically what the, your battery capacity is, what the current capacity of it is, the percentage of charge that it's got, the percentage of the life left in the battery, and how many times it's actually been cycled. So you can basically figure out how many times you've flown. Now, um, here you can actually change. Now, these are threshold, voltage thresholds. So the first one will be at what point the model will start warning you that the battery is low. And the second one is the critical one. This is the one that will activate the battery failsafe, which basically the model will try and land itself. Now, you can change these to give you longer flight times, but obviously the lower you run these values, uh, the shorter the lifespan the battery is. So once again, if you're unsure, best um, keep them to where they are or uh, keep them within these recommended thresholds. Now the next tab is the limits tab. Now this is flight limit tabs. You can actually limit how either far away or how high the model will go. So again, if you're not sure, leave them where they are. Uh, you've also got um, the flight limit. Now the in the new version three software, they've basically put all the airports in the world into its database so it's to stop you basically flying within these areas and it will basically tell you what it will do when you fly cl close to these zones so these are really more like major airports it will take in the smaller ones as well and it basically just stops you flying into the airspace now the next tab along is tools now this is a very very handy tool uh, the most important one is this one this is the compass uh, information along here. Now these values should either, the first three, should roughly be between minus 300 and plus 300 value and the value at the end generally will be from about 1500 to about 1800 value. Now this is basically telling you what condition the compass is in. So sometimes if the if you've actually got the model sitting indoors and you've got it near a speaker or something, these uh, these values can go all to hell. So it's important that they're roughly within, because if they're not, and there's nothing affecting them, this is what can cause a lot of flyaway situations or erratic flying. Now you can actually check your compass uh, status by clicking on the compass button. So we clicked on that, it actually says there, no need for calibration. Um, there is actually, if you want to do it anyway, and it can sometimes resolve, like you notice that one value there is just slightly over 300, you can do a basic uh, calibration just by clicking on there. So it's just asking you to keep the model flat stationary and don't move it. And then you'll see it calibrating. 
and then that's it finished. Now you can also do advanced calibration. So if these numbers are way off and that hasn't helped, if you click on to advanced calibration uh, and click on OK. Now it's a bit quirky this because it's basically asking you again, it's telling you it'll take five to 10 minutes to do and be patient. You click on that and then it's basically saying, you know, keep it completely flat and stationary. Click on yes. Now, if you get a warning that shoots up and says that the IMU is too hot, it always does this. Just click on OK and basically let it do its thing. Now, when it's finished completing it, the progress bar will go completely empty and then you'll notice the, uh, the green tick here basically telling you all is OK. OK, now, the next step we're going to do is we're going to change the flight mode of the flight controller from Phantom mode to NASA mode. Now, it's important that you know what this will do. So if you're unsure, do a bit of research because it will unlock features in flight modes that if you don't know what they do, it will make you think that your model's either on a flyaway or do something crazy or it has interference. So do a little bit of research. If you're unsure, uh, certainly, uh, before activating it, make sure you've had quite a few flights on standard lockdown GPS mode because you simply can't go wrong with that. But if you have decided to proceed, uh, what you do is um, at the top right hand corner here, you'll see this phantom logo. That is actually a button. So if you click on the button, it will pop up a warning saying do not enable this working mode before completing advanced flight maneuvers with your phantom pilot training guide. So um, as I say, have a good read of that, realize what it will do. So you click on yes, it will pop another one saying, are you sure? Because it's doubly making sure that you know what this is going to do. So you click on yes, and it says the NASA, NASA working mode is now functioning. Click on OK. You will now notice at the top of there, you now have NASA M mode. Now, at first glance, the uh, assistant software doesn't look like it's actually changed. However, if you click on the advance tab, because this is really where the changes are, you will now notice you've got a few tabs here. Now, the first one is the fail safe settings. You can actually change the way that it fail safe. So by default, if the model loses connection or you activate the fail safe by turning the transmitter off, it's a go home landing. So the model will rise up to 60 feet, fly home and then land. Now, if you want, you can change this to landing mode where if it loses fail safe, it will just do a vertical land. That's not really a common thing that you would want. So keep that on home landing. Next one is IOC. Now, this is the orientation control log. Now, I covered this in my unboxing video of what that will actually do. So I won't go over that again, but if you want to enable it, you just check the box there. When that's been checked, you will now notice this bar here has become active. Now, on your transmitter, the S2 switch, that's the top left one, which is what operates the orientation control. Now, when you flick that, you will now see that operating. So you've got off, course lock, home lock, and then back off again. Now, the next one we have battery. We had that before, nothing's changed there, and limits haven't changed there. Now, if we click back on the basic tab and go back to the RC tab, you'll now notice the mode control switch has now become highlighted. So now using the S1 switch, if I click from the top position to the middle position, you will now see that the switch is moving across and we now have different options. So we have the GPS option as we had before. We now have attitude mode. What attitude mode is, is that it will keep the model at a fixed height. It will keep the model level, but it will not keep its position. So if it was windy, it would drift with the wind. Uh, videographers use these because you can get some really nice panning shots. The next step down, by default, it's just another attitude mode, so nothing changes, but you have a selectable tab here. So you have the option of fail safe. What this will mean is when you're in GPS mode or attitude mode and you decide to go all the way down, it will go into fail safe. So it will rise to 60 feet and fly home. You also have the option for manual mode. Now, definitely uh, don't take this one lighthearted. This is full blown manual mode. So this would fly like a, like a proper, uh, radio control helicopter so there's no stability program you will not have altitude hold you will not have location hold you'll not have auto leveling either so if you bank the model over 
Uh, the NASA assistant won't try and limit it to, I think normally it's 40 degrees, it won't limit it to that. So the model can actually flip right over and it will also not self right. So definitely that is one to either avoid or even just flick to fail safe. If you do set it to fail safe mode, the only thing to watch out for is that if you are sort of running between your switch modes, um, and you accidentally flick it too far down, it will go into fail safe mode. If you do that though, just flick it back up one or all the way one, up one, and it will basically go back to the normal mode that you were in. Well, I hope you found that video helpful, helping you setting up your Phantom 2 Vision Plus to the Assistant software. Um, if you're considering buying a Vision Plus in the near future, I hope you will consider us. Uh, we're a proper bricks and mortar model shop. We have a helpline available to 5.30 at 6 days a week. And we also have email support 7 days a week till 10.30 at night. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you have any questions, just drop them into the comments box and I'll do my best to answer them and um, hopefully you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel Marineville Multi Rotors and uh, bid you good night. Bye.